Hello everyone, welcome back. This is Mr. Paredes, and today's lesson is Module 8, Lesson 2, Write Two-Step Inequalities for Situations. This is in our Into Math 7th grade workbook, pages 271 through 278. The lesson that we're going to go over is the Build Understanding and Step It Out on pages 272 through 274. Let's look at the build understanding. As you have learned, a one-step inequality involves one operation. For example, x plus 1 is greater than 3 is a one-step inequality. In this example, 4, 40, and 4 million are all solutions because they make the inequality true when substituted for x. But 1 is not a solution because it does not make the inequality true when substituted for x. So what that means is if I plug in 4 for x plus 1, I'm going to get 4 plus 1, which is 5. 5 is greater than 3. If I plug 40 in, that would give me 41, which is greater, and so on. But the number 1 if I plug that in for x, 1 plus 1 is not greater than 3. So that's why it's not a solution. But a two-step inequality involves two operations. And that's what we're going to go over today. So let's look at task 1. Caitlin wants to buy sheets of trumpet music at the price shown. She has only $25 and she first needs to pay back $5 to her friend. How many sheets can Caitlin buy? Well, according to the information in the picture, sheet music or the sheet music for trumpets is $3 per sheet. Part A, describe how this problem represents an inequality situation. Well, she only has $25. Right. And that tells me she has no more than $25 to spend for sheet music and paying her friend back. So she has no more than $25 to spend. Part B, describe the part of this situation that is a variable. Well, the variable is going to be the trumpet music, right? Because we don't know how many she's able to get. So the actual number of sheets of music. That is what my variable is going to represent. Part C, what are all the costs that Caitlin's money will cover? cover? Well, I know she first needs to pay back $5 to her friend, and then she's going to use the rest to buy sheet music, right? So that's what it's going to cover. So paying back her friend, whoops, and sheet music. Part D, write an expression to represent all the cost that Caitlin's money will cover. Well, like we said, she has to pay $5 to her friend plus it's $3 per sheet, right? Which was X. So we could write it as 5 plus 3X or 3X plus 5, which is the more traditional way with the variable in front. Part E, write an inequality for this situation. Well, I know I'm going to use my 3X plus 5. 
And again, you can use the five plus three X, that's fine. And I know she has $25 to spend. But remember, like we said in part A, she has no more than $25 to spend. So that means she has to either pay less than 25 or equal to, right? So that would be our inequality for this situation. Part F, state a possible solution for this inequality. Now you can choose random numbers to plug in to this equation, solve it and see if it's true or not. But I'm just gonna go ahead and solve for the inequality. So I have three X plus five, it's less than or equal to 25. Now, just like we did before, I want to isolate the variable. So I'm gonna do inverse operations to get X all by itself. So we're multiplying X by three and adding five. So I'm gonna do the opposite. I'm gonna subtract by five to both sides. So that moves it from the left side of the inequality to the right side. 3X stays the same. 25 minus five is 20. Now, from here I need to divide because that's the opposite of multiplying. And I would have X is less than or equal to 20 over three, which is six and two thirds. Okay, now that tells me that the amount of uh, sheet music she can get, or the sheets, has to be less than six and two thirds, or equal to six and two thirds. She can't buy two thirds of a music sheet. So a possible solution would be six. And realistically, she's gonna be able to buy anything that is less than or equal to six. Part G, state a value for the variable that would not be a possible solution for this inequality. Well, what's one more than six? Seven, right? That's a possible one because she's not gonna be able to buy seven sheets of music. She doesn't have enough, right? And really anything over six and two thirds, she's not gonna be able to get, which is seven and above. So let's look at task two. Kyle is renting a boat with his family at a lake. The rental company initially charges $50 for the boat, plus the hourly fee shown. The family plans to spend no more than $250 on the boat rental. And the fee per hour, or hourly fee, is $25. Part A, describe how this problem represents an inequality situation. Well, we know the amount that the family is gonna pay for the initial charges and the hourly fee can be no more than $250. So I know the amount is no more than $250. Part B. What are the values in the problem that cannot change? Well, I know the maximum amount can't change. Which was $250. The initial charge of $50. That's another value that won't change. And the final value is the cost per hour, right? Or the hourly fee of $25. That's another value that will not change. Part C, what value in the problem can vary? 
and how can this be represented? Well, the value that's going to vary is the number of hours. That's what can vary, right? And how can it be represented? It can be represented with a variable. Part D, write an inequality for how many hours the family can rent the boat. Well, I know the initial fee is $50, right? And I know I have an hourly fee of $25 per hour. The max amount they want to spend is $250. And since that's the max amount, that means this over here has to be less than or equal to $250. Task three, a manager wants to buy headsets for the customer service team members to use. The headsets cost $12 each. The budget allows $155 to be used for customer service equipment, but the manager wants to save more than $20 for later in case it is needed for something else. How many headsets can the manager buy? Part A. Will the inequality for this situation involve addition or subtraction? Explain. So the budget has $155 and we're going to go against that with $12 a headset, right? So this is going to involve subtraction and the reason is because the manager has $155 but wants to buy headsets. Part B, write an inequality for how many headsets the manager can buy while staying within the limits. Well, I know the manager has $155 and we're going to get headsets that are $12 each. So we're taking away $12 per headset. And they want to save more than $20, right? The manager wants to have more or greater than $20 for later. Okay, so this is an inequality that fits this situation. $155 minus $12 per headset is greater than $20. Part C, explain why the inequality does or does not include equal to as part of the inequality symbol. Well, it does not, right? And it's because the manager needs to have more than $20. Not at least $20. Right? So we want it more than $20, not equal to $20.
Task 4. Miss Almery drives to school every day. Today she has 5 gallons of gas in her car. The fuel warning light comes on if the amount of gas in the tank drops below 2 gallons. She uses about one half of a gallon of gas per round trip. How many round trips can Miss Olimary take before her warning light turns on? Part A. In this situation, is Miss Olimary adding gas or using gas as she drives? Well, when you're driving, you're obviously using gas. Part B. Would the inequality have an addition or a subtraction sign in it? Well, since we are using gas, it's going to be subtraction. And I'll put a subtraction sign. Part C. What is the variable or the unknown in this situation? Well, what we don't know is the number of round trips she can take. Part D. Miss Almery has to keep the gas level in her car at two gallons or above. Therefore, what inequality symbol should be used when refer referencing to gallons? Well, it has to be or above, right? Above two gallons, so that's greater than. And it says it has to be at two gallons or above, right? So, or equal to, because it could be equal to two gallons. So we want it greater than two or equal to two. Part E, write the inequality. Well, I know based on part D, it has to be greater than or equal to two gallons, right? And it says she had five gallons or has five gallons and we're taking away one half of a gallon per round trip. Okay, so T is what I'm going to use for my variable and you can use any variable X, A, B, Y, Z, right? And in this case, I'm using T for trip, all right? So this would be my inequality. Five gallons take away one half a gallon per round trip has to be greater than or equal to two gallons. All right, everyone. So that is it for today's lesson. Hopefully this video was helpful to you. If it was, please click like. If you enjoyed the video, you can also click like as well to let me know. And also make sure if you haven't done so already to subscribe to the channel. That way you get notifications for new content as I post it, okay? Please make sure to complete and submit all your work, right? Any class. And as always, guys, take care.